shape. A beautiful strike. And he's done it. Welcome to the highlights of a fascinating day's cricket, the second last day of this final Cornhill Test match at the Oval. Australia 36 for two at the start. They lost Kim Hughes, remember, off uh, the final delivery from Hendrick on Saturday evening. A lead then of 74 and conditions at uh, the start of play a little more cloudy than normal. A bit of a cloud cover over that might assist the England bowlers, certainly in the early overs. Just one run added and uh, with me in the commentary box is Tom Gravening. didn't quite get that um, as he would have wanted, but it's racing away of the outfield quickly enough with no chance for Hendrick. It as though he was trying to hit it in front of point. Got it just a fraction late, but uh, it really sped away off the bat. And there's a good day for England through there. That was a diabolical ball to have to play early on. Beautifully taken by Alan Knott. And a little whizzer, he says to Hendrick. Really good delivery, that. And uh, Graham Wood, I don't think, did very much wrong. Managed to get the bat on it. And it's now 41 for three, and that's a great success for England. Caught not bold, Hendrick, 21. I don't think uh, I don't think Malcolm need worry too much about that. It's uh, just that they're saying I'm better in the mornings. It's a fine shot for four. gently at the moment. I'll see whether he got a nick on that. Is it, uh, yes, got an outside edge and uh, wasn't too far away from 200 wickets. But uh, can't really ever be considered a chance to Alan not Tom. Oh no, uh, got quite a thick edge on this. See that ball swinging slightly and Alan not really is running across at that. Oh, that's a lovely shot. Lent into that. Stoked it through the offside. Some equally good work in the field, too, there from Boycott. A long, long chase, but kept them down to two, but the stroke well worth seeing again. Really is a fine player, this man. Minimum of movement over there and pushing through on the rise. Timed that beautifully. But uh, incidentally, bringing up a fairly rapid 50 partnership for this fourth wicket. And he's repeated it again, and this time there's no need for anybody to run. Well, that just a shade earlier and picked a spot between cover and mid off. A glorious stroke. Ball. Inside edge. Onto the off stump and off go the bales. Mike Hendrick getting value at last for his accuracy. The ball just starting to run for him. He's had an outside edge, now an inside edge. An attempted run shot. Probably just held up on him. Just came into him a shade. Kept, caught the inside edge of the bat and down on the stumps. Marvellous shot. Tremendous full-blooded drive by Alan Border. Extremely attacking field to Dirk Willem. Oh, extreme attacking shot from Dirk Willem. 
back foot four runs. No sign of pre-lunch nerves or first test nerves. In the air, it's dropped. Willis. Well, that's a nice little partnership there between Alan Border and Dirk Wellham, 34 and 19 respectively. Wellham made a good start. Once again, he looked as though he was batting in a club match uh, rather than under all the tension of test match cricket. Uh, the dismissal there, Graham Wood, to that fine delivery from Mike Hendrick. And Graham Yallop, who I thought struck the ball superbly today, was uh, out playing on to Hendrick for 35. So we pick up play now with uh, just uh, four runs added after lunch. It's the second over, and it's Ian Botham coming in to bowl to Alan Border. Your commentators are Tom Graveney and Jim Laker. It's a lovely shot. Our volley clipped again through mid-wicket. Another three runs here very comfortably. Back so comfortably, they've managed to run a fourth. It's the first time I think it's happened in this test match. That's short, and that's four runs. And the England bowler should realise now that uh, you can't drop anything short to this man. Miss precious little, hammered it away, beautiful shot. Well, I'm rather quick between the wickets. He's very quick in the outfield as well. So the 150 comes up uh, for Australia, plus a first innings lead of 38, which puts them in a pretty strong position here, 188 for four. So both them to border. That steered away conveniently on the leg side to bring in this 50. They'll come back to two very easily. And this remarkably good player carrying on with this amazing run of consistency. 103 balls is all he's received, and he's made his 50 in just a fraction over two hours. That's short again, it's four more. Bad ball getting exactly what it deserved all the time in the world to rock under that back foot and hammer it through the offside. Well, this is Alan Border's best shot, and really it's an absolute gift for him. And another beautiful shot. So it usually feet to the slow bowler. Down the wicket, made it into half volley, cracked it through the offside. And it's fairly significant that uh, John Embry had to bowl at him without a slip. shot from him and yet he seems to get into positions where he could play it anyway that was just a bit short of a length and it's probably the best cross bat hook that we've seen the whole match smack in the middle perfect positioning 201 for four Australia Looks like another four runs to Alan Border. So as Alan Border goes on to 84, 
in terms of a declaration being made, possibly. It, Australia have more interest in winning this game uh, than England do. So it's in their interest to set a reasonable target and then to see whether England can go get them. That's out. The wicket they wanted, the man they wanted. John Emery got one to turn and find the edge of Alan Border's bat. Court Tavery at first slip. Bold Embury. 84. getting down there John Embry and that takes Rodney Marsh away from that dreaded cipher so England's attack continues in rather half-hearted fashion with Ian Botham bowling about half speed John Embry bowling the other end and explanation for those really said unusually poor figures 10 naught 41 naught for Willis at the top there really come through from the dressing now that uh, it wasn't just tired legs he was suffering from, but a tummy bug and also torn tummy muscles. The actual words were some fibre tear in the sort of midriff area. Well, I think to the common man that's a pulled muscle. So that may be Willis out of this attack permanently, reducing England to three bowlers, even two and a half with. Ian Botham really just uh, going through the motions. That's where there is a gap, but uh, Botham and Brearley are trying to force Marsh to play square of the wicket instead of hitting straight. They've succeeded in that so far. It is a uh, very sensible field setting. So there's a lot of thought has been put into this. rather unusual this series looking at some of the field settings that very rarely do you have anyone uh, at mid-off that's a good shot and that is Rodney Marsh's 3,000th run in test match cricket he joins Alan not now as uh, they're the only two men each to score 3,000 runs Beautiful stroke. Beautiful stroke to bring up young Dirk Wallum's first half century in Test cricket. Yes, indeed, it is uh, a fine knock from young Wallum. 53 not out there, and uh, Marsh already in good touch. 15 not out, but the innings of the day so far definitely came from Alan Border. Following on his century of the first innings, he looked odds on to pick up another in the second innings, but was out to that uh, splendid delivery from John Embry that turned right across him. Good catch that by Chris Tavare, but uh, a magnificent match for Alan Border. 232 for five then. And uh, we pick up play now in the first over after tea. John Embry, the off spinner, is coming in again from the Vauxhall end. He's bowling to Wellham. And in the commentary box, Tom Graveney and Tony Lewis. Must have been out, but it wasn't out. Well, well, well. And really, this was one of the most suicidal runs I've ever seen in my life. John Embry picks it up, and instead of throwing it to Alan Knott, he spears it in at the base of the stumps. A very difficult take. 
and Rodney Marsh gets home. Oh, yes. Rodney Marsh has great strength. Loves the shot, plays it well. And fielders needn't bother. And no problems here. This one speared in, short, wide, and an easy four for Rodney Marsh. Yes. Down the pitch, high and handsome, and four more to Rodney Marsh. <laughs> 250 up for Australia. Add to that the first innings lead of 38. Fielders in the arc, on the off and on the onside. Three each side, saving the one, just the one slip, and two men out deep. And a useful couple of runs there for Rod Marsh, and it really just shows how unfit Ian both must be to take this new ball and only have one slip, one close catcher. So England in a little bit of trouble here. Oh, it could have been a drop. It could have been a drop. I think the reaction of Ian Botham tells the story. I don't think there's too much doubt about this. Ian banging one in. Rodney Marsh, there's nothing else anywhere near but the bat. And Alan not spilling that not too difficult chance. It's in the air, but it's safe. It's gone a long way down, very fine. So Rod Marsh has had his escape, dropped behind the wicket of Alan Knott, and immediately clobbers Ian Botham for four. And that's it, a half century for Rodney Marsh. Fifty to Rod Marsh, sixty-nine to Dirk Wellham, two eighty-eight four five, and that's a very good effort from the Australian keeper. Fifty from only seventy-six balls faced, and he's hit seven fours. It's in the air, Gatting's under it. Marsh, the batsman, and he's out. Gatting has caught it. A brilliant catch off Botham, who thoroughly deserved the wicket. And Marsh has gone for a dashing 52. And that is Ian Botham's 200th Test match wicket. His 200th wicket in his 41st Test, beating Alec Betts' record for England, which established 200 wickets in 44 Tests. A splendid effort from Ian Botham. Congratulations from his teammates. Two hundred test wickets to Ian Botham in his forty first test and Rodney Marsh a standing ovation there. In this innings he reached three thousand runs in test cricket. He has two hundred and seventy five dismissals and he and Alan Knott are the only wicket keepers ever to go past three thousand runs. Good shot. Really picked that up nicely. So
79 now to Willem. That's a good shot. That's four runs and a nice blow. He could easily have hit right across that, but he played it straight down the ground. 315 for six, and Wellham near in 100. He's on 90, Ray Bright is three, and at the moment it's Hendrick who's been just about England's most successful bowler. In now to Bright, and he's having a crack. They're all having a crack now. Wellham has played some glorious shots. That's four more, and Australia racing ahead. Been very much uh, Australia's day, and uh, the folly here of England going into a match at the Oval with only four frontline bowlers has been fully exposed by these Australian batsmen. Well, Lily is still padded up. So a four would be very handy for this young man. Take him on to 99, and then a single. Uh, this vast arena pretty well covered now with outfielders oh and that's a beautiful shot couldn't have worked better for him four runs really was a super shot and they enjoyed that and Dirk Wallen now the nervous 99 <laughs> what a let off Absolutely incredible, straight in the mid off hand, and Dirk Wellham can't believe it. On to 99, he was on his way back. Uh, what a tragedy. Um, it had to be a G boycott. And he's bowled him. He bowled the straight one bright, looking to hit across. And Ray Bright goes for 11. It's the 201st Test wicket for Ian Botham. And he's fully deserved his success here today because he really has powered on and kept going. So Botham to Wellham. And that's it. Back through the back foot all the way for four runs. And what a great performance this has been from young Doak Wellham. To make a hundred in his first test match is certainly a day he'll never forget. And that must be close, yes, absolutely plum, went back, kept just a shade low. And Botham strikes again, Wellham goes LBW, after a magnificent effort of 103 out of a total now of 343 for eight. Gets a pat from uh, Dennis Lilly on his way back. And the, this young man who's threatened all through this tour, he was topping the uh, tour averages before this test match came. One or two people felt he might have had a chance earlier, but he's had to wait till the last test match. And my word is made up for it. And Hendrick to bowl to him. And he's edged it and he's gone. Into those very safe hands there of Ian Botham. And uh, that uh, should end play for the day. There won't be time for another batsman to come in. And that's a good looking scorecard for Australia. They started the day at 36 for two and they could have been in a lot of trouble. They got out of it with good innings from Yallop, splendid one from Border, and then that marvellous century from young Dirk Wellham, 103. What a day it is for him, and what a match, and what a Test match debut. The match, Australia, 352 and 344 for nine, and you can be certain that'll be a declaration in the morning, and England, 314. Well, what a day for Dirk Wellham. As far as I can trace, he became today the first Australian in the history of cricket to score a century in his first class debut, which he did against Victoria last Christmas, and then a century on his test match debut, which he did here against England.